All right, so um, I guess um, just to start off, let me let y'all know why I'm here. Um, I did, I built my own social network called Global 14, as you can see up there. It's basically um, a social network that I feel is the way social network should be and the way social media should be. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about my interests because a lot of people know me from music and what I do as a producer, but then they didn't know anything about like my other interests. And when, um, you know, trying to get into other fields, it's kind of really hard to do that if people don't know much about other things that you do. People know my career for 20 years as making music, making music. So then when I started doing this, people were like, you know, what brought you here? Actually, what's funny is that I spoke at another event that Tony was having here, the Downtown Project, one time, and I just came here to check it out. And people saw me sitting in the audience, and they was like, you know Jermaine Dupree's over there? You should go speak. And I didn't want to speak, but I got up on the stage anyway. Because um, <laughs> I kept saying it. So, um, but, but what I learned that day was that people, you know, they didn't really know much about any of the other things that um, my interests or the, any, any other things that inspire me. So when I, you know, started building Global 14, I started noticing that that was the thing that I should mostly put my um, energy into. So art out, you know, teaching people about art and how much, you know, what the value of art is, especially younger kids and, and my generation that don't know much about it. Um, as you can see, toys, that's like not your average toy, but uh, it's more like type of toy I would drive or whatever. But, <laughs> uh, but just, you know, teaching people about a bunch of different things and then coming to events like this is like inspiring for me to be um, possibly the only person in this room that's from my genre. Anybody else here make records? You make records? You got a video? You don't got no video. Nah. <laughs> nah. But so, like when I come to these type of events and I speak, I just notice that, you know, it's, a, it's really, really weird how tech and music are both like driving themselves down the same road, right? Yesterday I saw something about YouTube saying they're getting ready to start their own um, streaming service of music, right? So it's like everything that happens in tech and music is basically the same, like they just hand in hand. But every time I come to one of these events, I'm the only person here, which is really, really weird, right? So it continues to inspire me though to leave and take this word to the next place and let them know and just continue to keep doing what I'm doing. So along with that, that's one, you know, one or two of my inspirations. Um, um, sports, um, girls, um, uh, <laughs> um, I'm inspired by a bunch of things, you know, and I'm, I'm also inspired by um, just other countries and their culture and things that, that happen in other, you know, in other countries, basically, I'm, I'm really inspired by how music that I made or music that other people make um, changes people's culture in different places besides the places that I've been to or the places that I've seen. Um, one of the most interesting things that I encountered the other day when I was in New York was that um, I went to a Chinese restaurant, right? And the kid behind the counter was full-blooded Chinese, I guess. But when he spoke to me, he sounded like Jay-Z. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, how does this happen, right? But it's just culture. It's just what happens, what happens with our culture. And that's, that, seeing that process is like one of the most inspiring things because you want to try to get to the bottom of it or try to get to to see that happen even more. That's just like creating an artist, like he talked about Criss Cross. When I found Criss Cross, I was like 11 and 12. When, you know, I was 17, and they, went, they sold eight million records when I was 17 years old, or something like that, right, James? I don't remember, something like that. Um, but it was like, you know, it's, you create something from scratch like that, it's just like seeing this kid. I don't wanna, I, I really wanna follow him, and like really follow him, not on Twitter or nothing like that, like really. <laughs> <laughs> really follow him to his house and figure out like where the hell did you transform into Jay-Z at? Like at what point in your life did this happen? Because he's young and I'm just saying like you would if y'all were to hear this kid 
you would be like, what the hell, too? I mean, I'm really shocked. But anyway, I'm, like I said, I'm here to talk about the inspiration of my life, and I'm just telling you, those things, right now, culture is the most inspiration, inspiring thing to me, period, just the way our culture is now and the, the way that people are, um, you know, uh, coming together and creating things. I think tech alone, when I first started getting into this world and was traveling around, going to places, when I went to San Francisco, the most interesting thing about San Francisco to me was that everybody in San Francisco was willing to help me, right? Where I come from, you know, if you got to deal with Sony, the people at Universal hate you or, you know, vice versa. So it's never like if they got a cool thing that's happening at Universal, they will never share that information with you over here. So I came from a place where I was acting like this and everybody in San Francisco was like this and like, <laughs> come on in. And I was like, I don't know nothing about that, right? So, <laughs> but I, I quickly learned and that's like just like being here. It's like everybody in this room, I'm sure, you know, you, after you hear somebody speak, you walk right up to them, you say whatever, you hand them your card and if you're like me, you don't have a card, but you, you know, you talk to people and you shake their hands and that's, that's, that's very, very inspiring because like I said, I'm coming from, when you come from a different world of thinking that everything is competitive, you know, then you see people that's like in a, in a big, a much bigger business action world being open-handedly and saying like, you know, hey, I got a guy in my office that you could possibly use to help your company or this, that, and the third. It just makes your mind want to do more and, and understand. So I'm inspired by just tech alone and everything that has something to do with this. And the reason why I'm here is that I met um, everybody from Tech Cocktail last time I was here, and I was like, and I did an interview for them. And I didn't know what the hell I was doing an interview for anyway. You know, like, he's like, can you just do an interview? And I'm like, I guess. And I'm like... I'm supposed to say no, but I went on and did it. I was just hoping. But then I started like watching on Twitter and seeing everything that was going on with, and 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 that inspired me to want to be here today. You know what I mean? Like I said, I, every time I come to one of these situations, I'm definitely learning something more and more. And that's that's the biggest inspiration that I get out of life. Period is just being able to do something for so long at a the level that I, you know, at a super high level and then still being able to learn. Because I don't think, you know, when you're younger, you don't believe that that happens. You think, like, after college, that's it, right? I, I ain't go to college, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> most of y'all, that's what it is. So, uh, um, so I'm just saying, most of the time, that's what it is. I think most people think, like, they, they get to a certain point in life and they can't continue to keep learning. And I want to thank Everybody that's a part of the tech world that's continuing to keep trying to push that envelope, that, that to me, that's, that's the most inspirational or inspiring thing that you guys could do for a younger person that's trying to get into this world um, or, or a person that's doing what they're doing because that, that, that inspires you to continue to keep going. I've done things recently where I had dinners where James Andrews introduced me to, y'all know James Andrews, right? You've seen him. He's standing over there with the hat on, the cool guy in the corner. Um, he introduced me to a whole group of people one day about having dinner, right? And they then taught me about a way of having dinner. Now, I've been going to these, like, bougie-ass dinners in the music industry <laughs> where, you know, it's like, you know, you, you're told where to sit, and it's a paper on the table that tells you your name, and you're sitting beside basically somebody you've known forever, so the dinner is like the same dinner you had yesterday, but it's just at a different place. So they was introducing this. They introduced to me this thing of having dinner where you sit with people that you don't know, and it automatically makes you start having conversation with them. Um, you just sit there looking crazy, and they sit there looking crazy. <laughs> Eventually, somebody's gonna say something, right? So I tried this with all of my groups. I had all my artists one day. I had. James and his crew come and they help me and we organize this dinner. And I told all of my artists that, you know, you guys, like, as soon as we said the table's open, everybody tried to sit down the way that they know how to sit down. Everybody tried to sit with each other that they knew. And I started telling them, like, yo, you can't sit here. No, you can't. And they was like, why? What the hell, right? And you could tell that I really was, like, changing a pattern in their life that, has, that had never happened before. And it's really, really weird because I don't know how many of you have ever gone to a a dinner where you can't sit with your friend and you come with your wife and they tell you and your wife, y'all gotta split up. How many of y'all ever did that? <laughs> you, oh, yeah? 
Yeah, one person. You see that, James? <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. This is the shit you gotta introduce to people. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, like, when you do that, you ultimately have to have a conversation with somebody that you don't know, and then you start learning about things that you don't know. Like, I was sitting beside this guy who owned, I forget the name of the company, but he owned a company, and the, and the guy that was sitting beside me on the left side started talking about he had a startup that he started, and he named the company that this man owned as being the place where his startup got his jump off. And he was telling me about it, saying that I should use it for Global 14. This guy overheard it and was like, what company did you just say? And he said the company again, he's like, I own the company. This guy didn't even know. And it was like, it's amazing how much information can just be, you know, can travel in just one little setting. You know what I mean? Just like today, if he moved everybody that's in this room, all of you guys, these two dudes right here in the front, I know y'all know each other, right? See, y'all should just go split up. Just get out of, just go, go, go over there and talk to somebody you don't know and watch the information that, that, that'll, that you'll come back to your friend and be like, yo, I was back there talking to somebody while you was talking. And, you know, you never know what's happening. But anyway, I'm just saying these are the type of things that I get out of coming to this type of event. And that's my inspiration. Thank you.